Okay, we have lots of learning goals today. We are going to go over standard no uh, scientific notation, mean absolute deviation. We're going to go over equations, equations from word problems, and where two lines intersect. And then the last thing we're going to talk about is using a model to explain Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so let's quickly review these topics and... Um, and then we will go on from there. Second plus seven one two. I'm just resetting my calculator. So scientific notation is used to write really, really small numbers or really, really big numbers. Okay? To convert standard notation to scientific notation using your calculator. You press mode. Hopefully all of you are very, very proficient at this by now. Right now it's flashing on normal. We need it to flash on scientific. We're going to hit enter so it'll stick. Hit second and quit. And now we're going to, to do the example. The density of oxygen is 0 0.001429 grams per cubic centimeter. How is the number written in scientific notation? Remember that the E represents times 10. So the answer will not have an E in it, but the answer will have an E in it in your calculator. So let's go right here. We're going to write 0 0.001429. I'm going to double check it. 0 0.001429. Sometimes these can have like eight zeros in them. So you want to make sure that you get it written right. Okay. And all we have to do is press enter because we are in scientific mode. And here is our answer. 1.429. Remember the E. Uh oh, you can't see it. The E represents times 10 to the negative third. And because it is a very small number, that's why it has a negative exponent. And that's what that means right there. To convert sci scientific notion to standard notation, we got to go back and change our mode. we got to make sure we're on normal. Okay? Second and quit. And if you try and do something when you're in scientific, you're always going to get this kind of thing. So you'll know, get back there, change your... Uh, calculator mode to um, standard, okay, or normal. The mass of a building is approximately 7.1234 times 10 to the third metric ton. How is this number written in standard notation? So we're just going to go in and write 7.1234 times 10 to the power of 3. Hit enter. And there is our answer, 7123.4. Okay? Easy enough. Mean absolute deviation. Mad. We should know this. We've been taking, uh, doing this forever. Please don't take shortcuts. Make sure you do all the steps and you show and, and write them down because you, you, can't, you can't always do everything right here in this window. Okay? So... Always drink soda at dinner is our acronym to remind you, add, sad, okay? We've got add, divide, subtract, add, divide, okay? So we've got this little to remind you about add, sad. What is the mean absolute deviation of these numbers? Now, I want you to change a number. I want you to take this 12, and I want you to make it a 16, okay? So here we go. We're going to add our numbers first. 16 plus 78 plus 14, and I'm checking them after I put each one in. Uh-oh, see what I did when I'm talking? So i got to go put in plus 23 plus 89 plus 65. All right, and hit enter, and I get 285. And I have how many numbers? One, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm going to divide that number by six. So I've added, and now I'm dividing, and I'm marking them off as I do it. 285 divided by six, and I get 47.5. Okay, I'm going to show you that here in a sec. Hopefully you're doing it with me. Now we've added, we've divided. The next step is S, which means subtract. So I am physically going to write this down. Subtract 16, subtract 78, subtract 14, 
subtract 23, subtract 89, subtract 65. All right, now I'm ready for the next step of the subtraction. So I'm going to put this here so I can show you what I'm doing in my calculator and what I'm getting. 47.5 subtract 16, and I get 31.5. I'm going to make sure and keep my decimals all lined up nice. 47.5 subtract 78, and I get... Now, you see how I got a negative sign? We're going to ignore the negative sign and just write the number, 30.5, okay? We aren't concerned about negative or positive. We just want to know how far away each of these numbers are from the average or the mean, okay? So 47.5 subtract 14, and I get 30. 3.5 and you might even cross these off as you do them so that you keep track of which ones you've done 47.5 subtract 23 and I get 24.5 47.5 subtract 89 and I get 41.5 47.5 subtract 65 and I get 17.5. So I'm done with S, subtract, I'm marking it off. The next step is A, divide. Add, I'm sorry, A removes for add. So I need to add each of these six numbers. Okay, so I'm just going to make myself a line here. 31.5 plus 30.5 plus 33.5 plus 24.5 plus 41.5 plus 17.5 and I get 179 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and if I go back up here I should be able to see I've got 31, 30 and I should have checked them before I stopped okay um, and to make sure that I had all my numbers correctly. All right, so we've added. Now it's divided, and since we added six numbers, we're going to divide that number by six. And I got to go down here, and I get 179 divided by six. And my answer is 29.83 repeating. Okay? And that is all there is to mean absolute deviation. People, this answer will be as an answer choice. Lots of times, this answer is an answer choice. Lots of times, this answer is an answer choice. And that's why if you write down the steps and cross them off as you do them, you will get the correct answer because they're trying to fool you and get you to stop too soon. Okay? All right, let's flip the page. Equations. Remember your steps to solve an equation in your calculator. Anytime you see this type of situation, you are solving an equation. Now, we went over one recently in class where you actually had to write the equation, then solve it. And that may be the case, so remember that. First step is make sure you set your windows. So I'm going to go to my windows. X minimum, negative 100. X maximum, positive 100. Then I have 1. Then I have y minimum, negative 100. And I have y maximum, 100. And I'm going to hit second and quit so that I don't change any of those numbers. Then it says I have an equal sign, so I've got two sides of an equation. So I'm going to put in y equals, and I'm going to put 3.5 and use my x right here, plus 7. I'm going to come down. Now this is a fraction, okay? I need to put fractions in parentheses if I don't use alpha F1. So parentheses, 1 divided by 2, parentheses, X, take away 18. This is a minus sign because it is in the middle of things. If I had a sign out here, then I would use the negative sign, okay? So then I press graph. And this is where some people, they get too quick, they don't wait, you have to be patient, okay? 
Then once the two lines intersect, I press second, this trace key right here, and then I want the intersection, so I'm gonna use five, and first curve, enter, second curve, enter, yes, enter, and it gives me negative six point, ooh, negative eight point three. Negative 8.3, repeating is my answer. And generally, these are multiple choice, but if they're a fill-in, they're not going to give you a repeating decimal. Okay? Equations from word problems. Remember, how, how many times have I told you guys you can't work it inside? All right? So I'm going to read this, and then I'm going to set it up. Pool 1 contains 5.2 gallons of water. Travis will begin filling pool one at a rate of 2.3 gallons per minute. Pool two contains 67.8 gallons of water. Alex will begin draining pool two at a rate of 0 0.5 gallons per minute. After how many minutes will both pools contain the same amount? That means I got two equations and I need to set them equal to each other. Now, this type of problem can be the type where you have to write the equation, then you have to pick it out of multiple choice answers, or you may have to solve it, okay? So, I'm going to say everything about pool one on this side, I'm going to put an equal sign, and I'm going to say everything about pool two on this side. Pool one contains 5.2 gallons of water. Travis will begin filling. What is filling? Yes, adding at a rate of 2.3 gallons per minute. So this is your multiplying, this is your variable. Now that's just opposite of what you're used to seeing, but it's okay, all right? Pool two contains, this is your starting point, 67.8 gallons of water. Alex will begin draining. What would draining, what operation would draining be? Yes, subtract pool two at a rate, and the rate is, remember, your slope, rate of change. 0 0.5 per minute. So there's your variable there. Now we're going to go ahead and solve this, but if they had written them as multiple choice questions, just make sure this is the negative, or the subtract is with this and that this number and this number are together on the same side and that the x is with this because they're going to give it to you in all different ways not necessarily the way they gave it to you here that's why when you write it down and you really look at the answer choices you won't get it wrong we're going to go back to y equals and we're going to solve this so i'm going to clear this one and clear this one okay go up to y1 and I've got 5.2 plus 2.3x. Then I'm going to come down to y2, 67.8, subtract. Remember, it's in the middle of two things, 0.5x, okay? And I'm going to hit graph, and I'm going to wait for my two lines. Then I'm going to hit second, trace, 5 enter, enter, enter. All right, and here is an, a long answer. And like I said, if they are giving you this, they generally will not give you a, a repeating decimal or a, that's actually an irrational number, okay? Now, what if I get stuck in my, in my um, calculator freezes? The only thing you can do, because the teachers won't know what to tell you to do, is on your calculators, most of them have a small little hole, but do you notice that there's no small little hole here? And you stick your pencil in that small hole and it'll reset the whole thing. You have to make sure you go back and do windows, but what if I don't have one of those? Well, in that case, open this up, okay? Take one battery out. Put it back in if it freezes on you and restart your calculator, okay? It should have reset it. If you take a battery out, it should reset 
and and you would have a um, clear screen okay all right let's move on all right intersection of graph lines okay so here's a question what ordered pair represents a solution to both equations look where the two lines intersect what does intersect mean cross the ordered pairs listed are distractors you do not need to read them all you need to know is this point right here so you are looking for an answer which a point where they cross is negative 2 positive 1 okay and so that is um, your answers okay all right let's flip the page example number two how many miles will the two taxi services cost the same amount so there again they're wanting to know when this taxi and this taxi how many miles so in this case you need to be able to read the sides of your graph because they could have asked how much will it cost which would be twenty dollars but in this case they want to know how many miles which is five so make sure you're looking at the correct access for what you're having to answer all right last thing and some of you will get this and some of you won't remember using a model to explain Pythagorean theorem okay remember that Pythagorean theorem says the square of the side a plus the square of side B equals the square of size C okay so Remember that let's look at this. I'm still going to do that. And now I know that region Z is C. Okay. This side is C. This region is C squared. Okay. So if I added this side length squared plus this side length squared, it would equal this side length squared. Let's see what our answers say. An artist joined three squares regions at their vertices to create a figure shown in the diagram. The artist will use small congruent square tiles to cover each region without any gaps or overlays. Based on this information, what statement is true? The number of tiles needed to cover region X is the same as the number of tiles needed to cover both regions Y and region Z. So that would say that the Z plus Y regions equal X. Well, we know that's not true because this is really going to be your A and your B, and this is your C. And what we really need is the region A plus the region B is going to equal the region C. Okay? Or in this case, the region X plus the region Y is going to equal the region Z okay so I don't like a the number of tiles needed to cover region Y is the same as the number of tiles to cover both region X and region Z see this and okay so they're saying X plus Z equals Y well that's not what we want we want X plus Y equals Z okay so let's look at C the number of tiles needed to cover region Z is the same as the number of tiles needed to cover both regions X and regions Y will cover region Z. So there you go. It is C. Okay? So I know that's kind of a strategy to use to do that, but you kind of have to understand the whole Pythagorean theorem and what it's talking about. All right? So have a great day. You have a short packet, and it's just to get you up to date with what we've got going on. A few extra little things.